This morning we conclude with our sermon series, the meaning on biblical or of biblical uh, prosperity. For the last few weeks we talked about the meaning of prosperity. Last week we said, you know, that the key to prosperity is what again? The presence uh, of God. So I want to conclude on, on this sermon series, the meaning of biblical prosperity here this morning and uh, while I'm at it next week we're looking forward to next week because next week is what next week Sunday morning um, is blessing Sunday it's blessing Sunday and we are going to bless you <laughs> you say well I'm already blessed well come come to blessing Sunday and be more blessed amen and uh, we're going to pray over people and anoint people set people apart come with an expectation uh, I, I believe God's going to move. I believe that the gift of the Holy Spirit is going to operate. And we're going to trust God for a wonderful Sunday in the presence of God. Um, and here's what I want you to do. Please invite who? Your world. Say with me, my world. Your world is your spouse. Your world is your family. Your world is your colleague, your neighbor, your friend. Amen. And tell them, come on, let's go and serve God together. And, um, uh, and, and you will be surprised to see what the Lord will do in their hearts. Amen. So get them here. Turn to somebody and say this with me. Get them here. Get them here. Get them here. Get, come now. Come now. Cry the Owens. He saw us a toch. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, don't worry. I, I, I'm still working how to say that in Zulu and Sutu. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Okay. So, um, but, but, but bless you all. Do me lang. Uh, you see, I know a little bit. Likai. Kiteng, kiteng. Dit gaan lekker man. Dankie dat jy vraag oor. I want us to get into the word this morning. And uh, I, as I've said last week, we've said, you know, we talked about the importance of the presence of God. Amen. Because His presence is the key to everything. His presence is the key to prosperity, and um, there's a scripture in the Word of God, because you might be thinking, well, I have the presence of God. The Holy Spirit lives in me, yes, but you see, the thing is, sometimes we get disconnected. Life becomes challenging. We face difficulties. We go through seasons. We have many uh, unsolved issues within our lives, and before you know it, you might be disconnected, even if the Holy Spirit is there. It's just that we don't always pay attention. Amen. So, when we talk about pursuing the presence of God is that we will begin to pay attention to God again. The word presence in the Hebrew is the word panim. And uh, 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 the word presence in the Hebrew is the word panim. And it means face. The Greek word is prosopon. It means face. So what does the presence of God mean? It means we come face to face with God. His attention is on us and our attention is on Him. And there is fellowship. Isn't it powerful? There is fellowship, and from that fellowship, the goodness of God manifests, like I've just told you about Moses in Exodus chapter um, 33. So um, that's what it means to seek His face. So it's not that we don't have His presence. It's not that God goes away. God's there, but we need to get to that place where we really focus our attention on Him again. And that's why we read in James 4 verse 8 where the Word of God says, Come near to God and He will come near to you. Say with me, I must come near to God. So that's effort, that's discipline, that's you making a decision to be a pursuer of the glory and the presence of God. Now I want to challenge you here this morning. Make it out for yourself today. I am going to pursue God more than anything else. You see, that's easier said than done now, isn't it? Because before we get ourselves, we find ourselves entangled and just everything else but pursuing the presence of God. Now, that's why I want to encourage you here today. Be a pursuer of the presence of God. And we need to love the presence of God like we see Mary did last week. We talked about Mary, Mary and Martha, Lazarus. We looked at Mary. We were seated at the feet of Jesus. We looked at, at Moses and the Lord said to Moses, Moses, I'm with you. Moses, I'm with you. And I, I want you to journey now. I, I want you to begin leading the people. Moses said, Lord, I will not lead them unless I can see your glorious presence. I, I almost thought when I read that the first time, Moses, who do you think you are? <laughs> you speak to God. God, you hear his voice. Because look at Exodus chapter 33, verse 16 to 19. I just want to create some context. 
You see, so Moses and, and God had a conversation. So God heard Moses' uh, voice. Moses heard God's voice. He said to him, for your presence among us. Now, look at this. This is how important, how crucial it is to be at the sewer of God's presence. He said to him, for your presence among us, Moses said to God, sets your people and me apart from all other people on the earth. People, that's, that's powerful stuff. Think about that for a moment. The presence of God is what will set you apart in your workplace, in your business. It will set your business apart. It will set your company apart. It will set you apart from your colleagues. It will set you apart in your family. It's reserved for those who pursue the presence of God, church. He says, so for your presence, your panim, your, your attention on me, your countenance that shines on me and my attention on you, that's the presence of God. If you weren't here last week, go, go watch that sermon again on YouTube. He says, set your people and me apart from all other people on the earth. If you want to stand out like a sore thumb, <laughs> you need the presence of God. Any one of you wants to stand out like a sore thumb? Yes, when it is about God and God's goodness and God's will and God's dream and God's plan, I want to stand out like a sore thumb. Turn to your neighbor. If you don't know who your neighbor is, this is the person that's sitting close to you. <laughs> Tell them, let's stand out like a sore thumb. Let's pursue. Let's pursue the presence of God. Let's pursue it. Let's pursue it. And therefore, okay, let's just, I just want to read this, finish the reading, and then we will continue. He says in verse 18, then show me your glorious presence. So God said, but Moses, I will go with you. Okay, Lord, but, but still show me your glorious presence. I want to see. I want to see it. How many of you want to see God? See God's hand. See God move. See God do what only God can do. Moses had a longing for that. I have a longing for that. We need to have a longing for that. Then the Lord said, okay. Moses said, show me. The Lord says, okay. He replied, I will make my goodness pass before you, and you will call out my name, and I'll call out my name, God, that you can know. It's my goodness. And I will make my prosperity show up. The key to prosperity is the presence of God. I will make my face shine upon you. I will bless you. My hand will be with you. They are the same thing. They are the same thing. And so this morning, I want to talk to you about pursuing also the Word of God and having a passion for the Word of God. And why do I say that? Because last week we read about Mary. Can you remember what happened to Mary or how Mary responded um, in that situation where she and Martha hosted Jesus and his disciples? The first thing she did was what? To pursue Jesus. To pursue the presence of Jesus. To the point where it irritated Martha. And I asked you this. I asked you, who are you more like, Martha or Mary? <laughs> did you do your homework? Uh, have you figured that out between you and Jesus? A amen. And, and I just want to say this about Martha. There's nothing wrong with Martha. Be and, and here's the thing. Marys don't criticize Marthas, but Marthas criticize Marys. <laughs> so, so don't, be, don't say that I am more like Mary. I want to be with Jesus, but then you criticize Martha because that's not Mary. Amen. <laughs> I, I just wanted to get that out of the, uh, out of the way. But there's something about that story that continued. I struggled with it this week. And I'll, I'll tell you now where my struggle came from, my frustration came from. And, and I struggled with it. And I had to work it out until it became so clear. And I want to show you this. And this is that even though Mary pursued Jesus, she pursued the presence, she also pursued the teaching of Jesus, the word of Jesus. Let's read that scripture one more time. Luke 10, verse 39 to 42. Her sister Mary. So, so Martha was busy preparing this meal. And her sister Mary sat um, at the Lord's feet. She pursued the presence. That's one thing. Can you see that with me? What did she do? She pursued the presence of Jesus. The presence of God is the key to the goodness of God, to the love of God, to the plan. The, 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 the key to prosperity is the presence of God. Mary pursued the presence of Jesus. But listen to the, to, this, to the next few words just after the comma. She was listening to what he taught. I, and 
I, I want to talk to you about that part this morning. She was listening to what he she was, she was listening. She was paying attention to the Word of God. Today, this morning, for the next few minutes, is all about paying attention to the Word of God again. Having a passion for God's Word. What confused me was the part where Jesus said, Mary discovered the one thing that matters. So I want us to get there and just make a point. So Martha was distracted by the big dinner. You see, Martha is a good Christian. Many of us are good Christians. Martha had faith. Remember when Lazarus died, she came out to meet Jesus. She said to Jesus, if you had just been here, Lazarus wouldn't have died. She had faith. She knew Jesus could heal him. She knew it. She opened her home to Jesus and his disciples. She loved Jesus. She served Jesus by preparing a meal. But you see, here's the thing. Martha had many distractions. She did not pursue the presence of God and the Word of God like Mary did. She had many distractions. Can I ask you this? Do you have distractions in your life? Do you always find yourself in a place where you are, you know, entangled in some sort of situation or the other? And, you know, before you know it, the week is gone and you haven't prayed one sentence. And when you prayed, it was just, oh, Jesus, help me, because you responded to something that happened. <laughs> you didn't study the Word of God. You, you didn't fellowship with God. Let me tell you, this is the, this is the point. If you, do, if, you, if you don't have time for God in the week, it means you are too distracted. It means there are too many distractions. If there is no devotional rhythm, there are things distracting you. And you are a little bit like Martha. <laughs> You are a little bit like her because Martha was distracted. And it's amazing, you know, many of us can get easily distracted. Everything is always more important than sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening to the word of Jesus. Nobody's saying amen. <laughs> so I heard a few anas here. Ouch, oh, yes, pastor. I, I hear you, I hear you. <laughs> so she came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here? You see, it's not about just sitting. It's about where she sat. <laughs> sitting and being passive, yes, that's a problem and doing nothing. But if you sit, if you sit at the feet of Jesus. <laughs> Why was Martha saying that? Martha, Martha, don't you think it's important that she sit at the feet of Jesus? <laughs> she was not just sitting under the tree like Jonah, our good friend. <laughs> She sat at the feet of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I encourage you to sit at his feet. Lord, doesn't it seem unfair? And she become all, uh, you know, religious and jealous, you know, and stuff like that. Remember, she's a good Christian. And, uh, and now she's gossiping. Oh, you know, look at how lazy Mary is. She even instructs Jesus to tell Mary to come and help her. Now Jesus must do this for her. Have you ever... Pray a pray, uh, pray a prayer like this, O oh Lord, uh, uh, I pray that you change my husband. I pray that you change my wife. I pray, Lord, that you, uh, that you make my, my father to give me an allowance increase. I pray, I pray for many things. I, I pray that lightning will s s strike this enemy of mine, my colleague. Lord, you know, there's never see the light coming up on me. I, I, I rebuke you. I curse you. In the name of Jesus, you will die. Yeah, we can go very deep, amen. When it's about me and I and us, we can pray crazy prayers. Uh, what I learned from this is that Jesus does not respond to that kind of praying. Not at all. You can stop that nonsense praying. <laughs> Jesus just ignores her. The next thing he says, now, and, and this is the thing I, I struggled with, I battled with. He says in verse 42, there is only one thing we've been worth being concerned about. How many things? One thing. But yet I see two. I see Mary sit at the feet of Jesus. The Bible is very clear, and nothing in there is, you know, for no reason. I see two things. I, sh I see she sat at the feet of Jesus. I also see that she heard his teaching, that she sat under the word. But yet Jesus say one thing. 
one thing we, worth being concerned about. Here's the thing. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. Why did Jesus say one thing? I'm going to drop the bomb now. Are you ready? He said one thing because Jesus and his word, they are one. And that's why I struggled. I was complaining to me. So I said, I, I don't get this sermon. The Lord tells me to say this, but I don't get this. It's not one thing. There are two things there. The Lord said, no, me and my word, they are, we are one. You cannot separate the presence of God from the word of God. <laughs> you cannot separate them. Get this, get this. Access to the presence of God is through his word. And yes, I know we pray and we worship, but the word of God reveals his presence. Listen to this. The presence of God reveals His Word. That is why Jesus was faithful to His nature. His presence that what? Revealed His Word. Martha, Mary discovered how many things? One thing. Who are they? <laughs> the presence and the Word. They are one. Hallelujah. And that is why this morning when we access the presence of God in worship... It is very important that we also get to the Word here this morning. Amen. And, and, and I know there are those Holy Spirit services where we never get to that. And that's good. And it's timely. And it's God's presence. But unfortunately, there are also people who think, you know. And by the way, I'm a soaker. I, how many of you have heard the word soaking? Soaking in the presence of God and intimacy and going deep with God and experiencing His presence and that's where we built our relationship, and that is good. But we must be careful that we not only stick at soaking. We have to go over from soaking to the Word. As a matter of fact, soaking leads to the Word. Soaking reveals the Word of God in our lives. And this is why we also need to, when it's time to worship God in this corporate setting, we need to praise, worship, thank, lift our hands, do whatever we can, and really worship God, because the worship reveals the Word. And his word will reveal his, uh, the, the, the worship will usher us into his presence, sorry, that reveals his word and the word reveals his presence. Amen. Have you discovered that? Have you discovered what Mary has discovered? Mary has discovered it and that cannot be taken away from her. Amen. Now there's something else here and uh, this is striking and you probably know this, but who is the word? Jesus Christ is the word. <laughs> Jesus Christ is the Word. The Word is Jesus Christ. Therefore, they can never be separated. Listen to John 1 verse 1 to 2. Can we do this one? Let's get into the Scripture. Jesus is the Word. Say this with me. Jesus is the Word. So, John 1 verse 1 to 2. In the beginning, before all time. Before. Will you agree with me that before time was, God was. I'm just asking because, I mean, this is the major question of science nowadays. They want to know how something came from nothing. How can nothing produce something? How can, how can something exist out of nothing? I've done much research. I can tell you that that's the big question. Because in the beginning, there was nothing. Before the beginning. And they don't want to believe in a God who ordered something to come about. And I'm busy working on a sermon series, God of the Universe. And, and, and for those of you who've got doubt and challenges uh, because the scientific world and media out there is messing with Christian minds. So we're going to get into that later this year. And, and especially the young people that's bombarded, you know, with, with, with science and what's happening in universe and how everything came about. That's why the Word always gives us the truth and the answer. In the beginning, before all time. Before everything was who? Was the, the word existed there. The word was before anything else was. Now listen, who was the word? Christ. The, 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 the word here in the Greek is Christos. By the, by the way, the New Testament was written in Greek. And certain, certain Aramaic portions. But mainly ancient Greek. The name of Jesus Christ is not Jehovah or Yeshua. His name is Jesus because the Greek is Jesus. And in, 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 in his, uh, not his, uh, it's not his surname. <laughs> it's his assignment, sorry. Jesus, is su Jesus, and his assignment, Christos, the anointed one. Christos. So in the beginning, um, before all time, 
The Bible makes sure that we don't understand the beginning of time. Before time began, Jesus was. And he was the word. Say this with me, Jesus is the word. Where was this word before time? With God. And the word was who? God himself. Is the word God? Yes. Who is the word? Jesus. They are all one. I, I get goosebumps and you don't get any. But I, I want to tell you why I get. Is that okay? Mary was seated at the feet of the greatest manifestation of the kingdom of heaven ever. Heaven invaded that small home of, in, in Bethel of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Lazarus. Jesus was there. Jesus was there. He was there. He was God. He was the Word. He was the one even ever before the beginning of anything that was created. Jesus was there. And Mary perhaps didn't understand everything we talk about here this morning. But she just knew, i got to pursue this. i got to pursue this. That is why the Word of God makes sure you and I understand that she was seated at the feet of Jesus Christ. And where you find His presence, you find His Word. Hallelujah. And there is power in the Word of God. So much power that nothing were made if it hadn't been made without the Word. That's why we have verse 3. All things were made and came into existence. Science referred to this as, scientists refer to this as matter. And uh, By the way, another question they have is, how can energy, how can, because we, we understand what happened when what they call the Big Bang, is that there was a lot of energy taking place. And another question they have, this, is, this scripture is so deep, it deals with some of the, the biggest questions of science of our day and time. They want to know how energy then translates into matter. Now, look at this. He says, all things were made and came into existence through him. <laughs> how, how did it come to being, to being matter, substance? He created everything. And without him, not even one thing was made. How many things were made without him? Certain galaxies, because right now, you know, we speculate about how many universes there are. It doesn't matter. The Bible says still, all things were made. By who? The Word. Can we give the Word a big praise in this place? <laughs> oh, this is deep to me. It's great. This is great stuff for me. So I'm, I'm try to, I try to help you here. Can you see where Mary was seated? Can you see? Can you see? Jesus said, oh, Martha, Martha. Oh, shame, Martha. You haven't yet discovered this thing. Mary discovered it. She discovered the, she discovered the bigness, the greatness, the magnitude of being at my feet. The Word. The Word. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I wish I could be where Mary was, where his disciples was. I don't know about you, but many times I find myself wishing. And um, I just want to say this. We can. We can. Because we have the Holy Spirit in us. That's why Jesus said it would be to your advantage, to his disciples, that I go away. Because if I don't go, the comforter won't come. The Holy Spirit is God and he lives in us. All we need to do is to do what? Start paying attention again. All we need to do is to be less like Martha and more like Mary. Less distractions and more sitting at the feet of Jesus. Because through the Holy Spirit, Jesus comes. He remains in us and we remain in Him. This is why Jesus said, pray this, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We can experience His manifested presence and His manifested glory. But you need to make a choice today. If you're going to pursue His presence. Also, if you are going to pursue the Word. Why? Because the Bible, His Word, reveals His presence. Listen to me, church. Listen now. If you want to get closer in your relationship with Jesus, you need to get closer to the Bible. I, I, know, I know you've heard this from Sunday, since Sunday school, amen. <laughs> Lees your Bible and bid elke dag, bid elke dag. Is there an English version of that? 
Read your Bible and pray every day. Okay, we'll probably go something like that. Do you love the Word? Do you have a passion for the Word? Mary discovered one thing. The Word, the presence, the Word, the presence. The Word reveals the presence. The presence reveals the Word. The one, the one does not go without the other. The presence without the Word is weird. Equals weird. We have, many, we have many of them in our day and time. Weird. I say it again. The presence without the Word, that, that, that leads to weird. Do you pursue the Word? Do you pursue the presence? Coming back to the theme or the title of our sermon series, the biblical meaning of prosperity, now is probably a good time to teach this, that we're really not after prosperity. <laughs> we, Mary was not after the prosperity. We're really not after the hand of God. Listen now, church. Now is probably a good time to say that. What is, what is it that we're really after? We're after Jesus. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the solution. Jesus is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Everything is found where? At the feet of Jesus Christ. Everything is found at the feet of Jesus Christ. You see, this is where modern day prosperity teachers get it wrong hyper teachings on prosperity they teach five ways to get God's prosperity and they make the people focus on prosperity while our focus has to be on Jesus Christ <laughs> my question this morning is your focus where's your focus where's your fo I'll serve God because then God will bless me and I'll get this and I'll do that and I'll have this and I'll be that and I will proclaim the promises you are a little bit like Martha it's not bad don't feel guilty Martha's going to heaven Martha was a woman of faith Martha invited Jesus in her house but you see what God is after is true worshipers who will worship him in spirit and truth because it ushers them in the presence of God and it's at the feet of Jesus that we find everything hallelujah everything you're you're not after anything you see we were designed by God for God we're actually after Jesus Jesus be the center of my life Jesus be the center of it all I, I don't know the rest of the words that's why I stopped singing but could could have could have been good could have been very good and fitting here this morning. Amen. Lift your hands and say, Jesus, be the center. And therefore, church, and give, me, give me a few more minutes. I want to conclude with this now. Therefore, church, we need to love the Bible again. Avi, bring me your Bible quickly. Thank you. Thank you, Avi. Look at this. Look at this. You say, well, that's just a book. Yes, it's just a book, but you see there's life here. When you read it, when you fellowship in it, Mary discovered it a long time ago. What's the word of Jesus to Mary? Oh, Martha, Martha, Mary has discovered one thing that's really of importance that can't be taken away from her. What was that? His presence. What was that? His word. Do you have a passion for this? You say, well, what about all the, the, uh, the, the registers, the genealogical re records? What about that? I don't care if you read those things and you fall asleep, but read them because there's power in this word. Read everything from Genesis to Revelation. There's power. If you want to have a relationship, how many of you want to have a deeper, more meaningful relationship with Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christus? How many, how many? Study His word. Study His word because His word reveals His presence. Hallelujah. Study it. Love the Bible. Love it, meditate it. And I want to show you a man quickly in the old covenant who loved the word of God. And his name was Joshua. Thank you, Avi. Thank you. This is a very good Bible. I hope it's a good understanding. I don't like it so much. Joshua 1 verse 8. Let's read this. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. I want to show you three things here and then we can end. The first thing I want to show you is the book. The word of God must not depart from your mouth. Why did he say that? Because we defeat the devil through, or we succumb and fall prey to the devil through what we say. So Joshua was warning us about this word, the word, and 
His presence, His one, the Word is Christ. Without the Word, nothing was created. His power in the Word. He says, this power must not depart from your mouth. It must not depart from your mouth. It must not depart from my mouth. I include myself here. Sometimes that power departs from our mouth. It's the only power that's able to defeat the enemy in your life. God has a good plan. God wants to prosper you. There's a blueprint. God's unchanging about his plan for your life here this morning. But you see, the enemy is not lazy. Like many Christians, not in this church. I'm talking about Christians far away from here. The enemy is not lazy. And what he comes is, my friend, listen, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He will lie to you. Many of us, our big problem is that we're battling with the lies of the devil. We're struggling all day long. Secondly, he wants to deceive you. He wants to tempt you. He wants to lead you astray from your assignment, your call, because you were placed in that school, that university, in that family, in that marketplace, with that business. You were purposefully placed there by God with a blueprint to bring forth transformation transformation to establish the kingdom of God to let the light shine to be salt in that area and the devil doesn't like it so he's out there to kill steal and destroy in our lives but Joshua said and and how do I know this by the way am I making this up no because the Bible is all about context just the context quickly Israel was now under the leadership of Joshua and they just passed the Jordan River supernatural miracle we all know about that they just passed that. And what did they do? God had a promise for them. We, we, we call it the, the, the land of milk and honey. The land of milk and the promised land. God is a promised land. But it doesn't mean that the enemy is not there because it's the promised land. The enemy is very, very aggressive about God's call and plan with your life. And therefore... And Joshua knew that. And Joshua knew because I think the first yeah, the first enemy they were going to encounter was Jericho. You remember Jericho? And we used that to explain spiritual warfare. So there were many enemies. And I don't want to get into that. The, that's just the context. So Joshua said, if, if we're going to do this, if we're going to be all God has called us to be, listen now, if we are going to, if we are going to take possession of this promise, how many of you want to take possession of the promise of God for your life? and see it, and manifest, and have everything God has in store for you, then listen now, Joshua said, if we're going to, if we're going to take possession of this, guys, we have to, we we cannot allow the word of God to depart from our mouths, and I want to say the same thing to you, God has a good plan, but the enemy wants to derail you, whenever he lies, whenever he comes to kill, steal, and destroy, you need to do what? Speak the word, speak the word, Speak the word. Turn to somebody and say, it's time to speak the word. Declare the word. If you don't, if you don't, listen what will happen. You will become anxious. Many of us battle with anxiety. You'll become, you will, you will become afraid. You will, you will carry pressure and stress that you cannot, that you are, you're not able to do that. The problem is, I think too many of us, here I include myself always, obviously, we mo- we too much like Martha. <laughs> you know, Jesus is here in the home, and I'm preparing a meal there. And, oh, I'm busy, busy. I mean, criticizing other children of God, you know, a little bit. And I'm a good person. I'm going to heaven. You know, I was at church Sunday. But here's the thing. We're not intentional with the word. We're not intentional with the presence. I think too many of us are like Martha. We don't believe what we hear here this morning. We, oh, good message. Well done, pastor. Oh, bless the Lord for you. Yes, but we have to do it. Amen. I give you a key, speak the word, speak the word. Jesus, what happened when he was attacked by by Lucifer, fasted for 40 days? Yeah, Lucifer comes, not a stronghold, not a a, a demon or another devil, but they sent Lucifer, Lucifer, the main, the prince of darkness. What did Lucifer say? Well, if you're so hungry, why don't you? No, he he first tried to mess with his identity. He said, if you're the son of God, tell these stones to be turned into bread. Jesus said to him, but don't you know that it is written? What did Jesus do? You see, exactly the thing that Joshua told us to do today, 
Do not let the word depart from your mouth. It is written. It's time that we tell the enemy again, it is written, it is written, it is written. Over every situation, over every lie, over every anxiety, over every fear, over every depression, it is written. And then we become delivered and we are free because the truth shall set you free. The truth is Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He's, say with me, he's the way, the truth, and the life. Now, now turn to somebody and ask them this. Why are you still looking for truth then? <laughs> okay. Yeah, because that's a big thing nowadays. It, 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 it's hip. It's, it's, I almost say, said it's hip hop. It's, it's, it's hip. It's, it's mod to say I'm a seeker of truth. I'm a little bit of a philosopher, you know. Stop your philosophizing. Get to the feet of Jesus. <laughs> I know you have a brain. But still get to the feet of Jesus. Mary also had a brain. Get to the feet of Jesus. Okay, the second one, quickly, quickly. Uh, just see if everybody's still awake here. I've got to finish this, okay. Um, just look at somebody sitting close to you. If they're going like this, it's, it's not because they say amen. It's because they, you know, just look if they're not sleeping. <laughs> I'm just joking, you're all wide awake. Listen to the second one. So, the book of the law, you say, well, that's the book of the law. Yes, it's the word of God. Second Timothy chapter 3.16 says that every scripture is God-breathed. God-breathed. It's the word of God. He says, but you shall do what? Meditate in it day and night. What must we do with the Bible? Have a passion for the word of God. Speak it and meditate in it. Good advice from Joshua. About to conquer his promised land. Good advice. Meditate. What does it mean to meditate? We must become one with God's word. Jesus and his word is one. You and I must become one with Jesus in his word. Remain in me and I in you. Then you will bear much fruit. Herein my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. Hallelujah. When we bear much fruit, that shows the world that we are prospered. Amen. <laughs> but you see, it's not about the prosperity. It's about the fruit we're bearing. We must become one with the Word. Can I ask you quickly, is your mind and thought aligned with the Word of God? Is it, is it, is it? Or is it aligned when you do Bible study and devotion and when you're at church, but every other time it's not aligned? Is it always aligned? Are you one with the Word? Because here is what that word meditation means. It means to reflect on God's Word. It means to ponder the Word of God. That's what it means. In other words, it, it means to speak it. It means to pray the word of God. That's that w what the, the meaning of that word. So in other words, we are, we are one with the word even when we are not in front of the word. <laughs> That's what meditate means. Say this with me. I'm one with the word even if I'm not reading it. I'm still one. And that can only happen if you read it and if you study it. Amen. <laughs> Love the Bible. The, by the way, the Hebrew word is the word Hagar. I, I, I know this is going to bore you, please, but I, I just feel like I need to say this. This word is an onomatopoeia. <sighs> Why did I say that? I should have just kept it to myself. Okay, it basically means that the meaning of the word sounds like the word. In other words, when you say the word. So in other words, this, this word means to to roar and to growl the word of God. Besides from reflecting and pondering and all the things that I've just said to you, that's the first part, that's the A part. The B part is now to growl it, to hey God, the word of God. I promise you, I've done my research. You can go check up on me. I know it's weird, but it's what it is. Then to somebody say, it, it is what it is. Onomatopoeia, okay, never mind. Onomatopoeia, <laughs> and why is this? Why is this? Because it's used in spiritual warfare. You see, the devil goes about like a roaring lion, but we have the word of God in us. Hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hallelujah. <laughs> People, the Hebrew language, the Greek language is so deep. It's so rich. I totally love it. I'm telling you this power in the Word. Jesus is the Word. The Word is Jesus. Before all things, the Word was. The Word is God. The Word was with God. Hallelujah. Without the Word, nothing was created. Without the Word, you are powerless. I'm powerless without His Word. 
That's what Mary discovered. Mary, did you know <laughs> that you were sit sitting in front of the Word? Martha, Martha, you're distracted by many things. You don't understand heaven is here. You don't understand everything is here that's ever been worth anything is here. He's here. Listen, he's in me. He's in you today. Remain in him and he in you. The last thing. Before we conclude the last thing. Okay, the last thing before we are going to conclude. So this is not the conclusion. Okay. I don't want to lie here. It's Sunday and everything and we're fasting and praying and stuff like that. So, <laughs> so he says, so meditate in it. Day. So how, how, when must we meditate? Okay, I, I'll raise my, I'm guilty. Anybody else who's guilty? Uh, I, I meditate the, the Betway SA20. I meditate the soccer team. I meditate US Open. Uh, oh, sorry, Australian Open. I meditate... Uh, yeah, I, I, medit I meditate. Who's this new guy? DDP. DDP. By the way, for you guys not watching, uh, you know, uh, mixed martial arts, like I'm a lover of that uh, uh, mixed martial art. You know, it's just DDP. DD. <laughs> no, no, no. It should stop be DDP. It must be Logos Rhema. Logos Rhema. Jesus is the Word. The Word is Jesus. They are one. And I'm a victor. And I'm destined for victory and purpose and being successful and being prosperous because there's a call on my life. Hallelujah. Roar! <laughs> hey, God. By the way, that's Hagar. Hey I'm not weird. I've explained to you the meaning of Hagar. Hey it's still contextual. Amen. Nothing wrong with a little weird and a little crazy. <laughs> for Jesus. Let's just quickly say that. Say with me, for Jesus. <laughs> Otherwise, that can't go anywhere. <laughs> now he says the last thing. Oh, this is big. Oh, Lord, help us. Why must there be scriptures like this in the Word? He now says, okay, so to do what? He says that you may observe to do. Read it for yourself. That you may observe to do. Say with me, to do. According, that, according to all that is written in it. Do the Logos. Do it. Say with me, just do it. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Nike. <laughs> Nike. Okay, here's what I want you to do. Save if you don't have the money for a few weeks. And then you buy a Nike t-shirt, okay? If you do that, if I see many Nike t-shirts, what I'll do is I'll buy one and preach with it one Sunday morning. But find one that says just do it, okay? Okay. I want to tell you, you better do the Word of God. We cannot just hear it Sunday after Sunday. We cannot just read it, get the truth, but we don't do it. We have to be doers of God's Word. Listen, church, James 1.22 makes it very clear is uh, where the Word of God says, um, yeah, uh, yeah, James 1.22, it says, do not only be hearers of the Word of God, but be doers, because if you are a hearer and not a doer, you are a fool. No, it doesn't say it like that. It says you are foolish. You're fooling yourself. <laughs> but I mean, if you fool yourself, you are a little bit of a fool. <laughs> it's the Bible. <laughs> okay, now is probably a good time to turn to somebody. And just preach a little bit and say, so, are you, are you, are you, that, that, don't say that word, are you? Please, don't be stupid. That is simple, wees nie, man. Hoe kan jy die Bible lees, maar jy doen nie waaraan staan nie? Wat help dit? What does that help? Now you read and read, but you don't do it. You, you're fooling yourself. That's why I'm for making notes. Because we can make notes and we can, uh, we can revisit our notes because God will speak to you here this morning. He will, he will help you to understand things. Write it down when you get something. Here's the other thing he's going to do. He's going to reveal his will. He's going to speak to you. When the word goes out, he will give you instruction. Say this with me. When the word goes out. I will receive instruction. Listen, church, God, listen now. God wants to show you where to go and what to do. 
He wants to show you. Mary sat at the feet of Jesus. She knew I will find direction. She knew I will find instruction. She knew this is going to change my life. Hallelujah. Let's be serious with the word of God. Listen, some of you need to do something. There's something you've been putting off and putting off. I'm here to tell you today, do it. Do it. God has been talking to you. You've heard his word over and over. Do what you need to do. Maybe there's a relationship you need to restore. Maybe it's something that you need to do here at church or for church. Maybe you need a witness to that, to that colleague at work and invite them to church. Just do it. If you're going to know God as the God of El Shaddai, uh, the, the God of more than enough, the God of plenty, we better be doers of the Word of God. We cannot be sitters, hallelujah. We've got to be doers of the Word of God. Get busy, get busy in 2024 because God has got great things in store, but we've got to move, we've got to shake, we've got to put our hands to whatever it is that God has called us to do. In Jesus' name, give Him a big praise if you're with me this morning. Just do it. Be doers of the word of God. What has God called you to do? Don't put it off anymore. Because the longer we put it off, we're getting to that place of disobedience. We don't want to be disobedient to God. We don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit in us. Let's become doers because if we will defeat the enemy with the word, meditate in the word, do the word, what will happen? Listen to this. For then, verse 17. Well, it actually says, it, it actually says, for then, there it says, then, okay. No, 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 we are at the wrong scripture. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. It's not clear, is Oh, that's the sign from them that time's up. Sorry, okay. <laughs> what does it say? For then. Say with me, for then. Say with me, it's for then. Want as jy dit dan nou doen, what will happen? He says, for then, only then, for then and only then, when you pursue his presence and his word and his word and his presence, for only then what will happen? What will happen? Come and read it, one, two, three. For then you will make your prosperous, there's that word, and then you will have good success. I just want to ask it now. How many of you really wants to be successful in the will of God and see God makes His ways prosperous in your life? Really, if, if you want, just, I, I know it's obvious, but just as a sign of faith this morning, say, yes, Lord, Yira, Lord that's me. I want to be prosperous. I want to be successful right there. If that's you, raise your hands for a moment. That's me. That's us. That's you. That's me. I want to encourage you, become passionate about the Bible. Become passionate about knowing Jesus through the Bible. Become passionate about Jesus. He's the answer. He's the solution. Let's conclude. Now we can go. Timothy 2, 3, 16. Now listen to this quickly. I want to do this quickly and then we're going to pray. He says, God has transmitted his very substance into every scripture. Give me the Bible again, please, Avi. Just quickly. Thank you. What did God do? Listen to me, church. What did God do? Here is the Bible. Here's the Word of God. And, and please, and please, the whole Scripture. And don't get into science and stuff like that. And history trying to disprove the Word of God. And what's canon and what's not canon. And what should be part and not. No, God gave us His Word. Here it is. He says, so God, what? He transmitted His very substance into this. Scripture, Logos, written. He's very, He's very, so... When we read this and live this, meditate this, the substance of God permeates our whole beings. It's in here, church. It's in here. We cannot know the presence without the Word. We cannot know the Word without the presence. They are one. It's in here. God is His Word. 
God is His Word. God has transmitted His very substance. And please, it doesn't matter what translation you use. Find a translation that you can understand and meditate. That's the point. Amen. And don't be into all the science of what's wrong and what's right and what translation is from God and what not. Do whatever you can to understand this book and love this book and have passion for this book. For it is God-breathed. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God will reveal Himself to you when you read the Bible. You will become aware of the person of the Holy Spirit. And here's the thing. All of a sudden, you will feel like you're sitting at the feet of Jesus, under the teaching of Jesus, just like Mary. You can have what Mary had. You can have what Mary had. Do you want it? Do you want it? Have you discovered what Mary discovered? Have you? Avi, why is your Bible pink? Is you sure this is not Fiona's Bible? Are you excited? Listen, it will empower you. Say this with me, the Bible will empower me. Without the Bible, you're not empowered. You're critical, you're cynical. You have too many questions that doesn't matter. Like how can nothing produce something? You're a little bit like Martha. You need to get back to the feet of Jesus. It will empower you by its instruction. It will never leave you in a place where you don't know where to go and what to do. It makes time, but hang in there. God will show you. Because where His presence is, His goodness is manifested. And correction. Say with me, correction. You see why correction? Because we all have to change. Quickly turn to two, three people. Tell them, change, change, change. Alsjeblieft toch, kom oor jouself. Verander, verander, verander. Kom nog net oor jouself, man. Dit is nie jou ma of jou pa of van wat jy geërf het of persoonlijkheid nie. Jy moet meer wees soos Christus. You got to be more like Christ. You did not inherit personalities of your ancestors. You need to be more like Jesus and give Him a big price in this place. And you can only be more like Christ. If you study the Word, if you're passionate about His presence, if you're passionate about His Word, if you're passionate about seated at the feet of Jesus Christ, that's where we change. I'm talking to few people here today. You've never thought that you need a change. You are one of those who believe, so gemaak, so laat staan, jy weet. I, I, I am like that. I'm, I, I'm like my mother. No, my friend. There was a rebirth that took place. You are like your brother. His name is Christ Jesus. You have his DNA. If, if your behavior does not speak of him, I urge you, it's time to change. It's time to change. <laughs> it's time to change. It's time to transform. Hallelujah. This word will correct you. And the pastor, of course. As long as it's the word, amen. That's why the Bible says, make disciples. Make. Say with me, make. <laughs> okay. Okay. We are finished. Pastor Carl, jy moet so lang kom, anders gaan ek nooit klaar kry hier vanochtend nie. So it will empower you. It will empower you by instruction, correction, and it will give you the strength to take the right direction. The strength to do what? Some of you, you need to start taking direction, stand up for something, making some directional changes. But it's too difficult to make those changes. The Word of God, when you spend time in the Word of God, will give you the power to make those changes in your life. Those course changes, those direction changes. It will give you the power. Church, really, really, listen now. Without the Word of God, without God's presence, you're a powerless Christian. The devil laughs. He will lie at you. He will kill, steal, and destroy. He'll do whatever he likes in your life. You think, you know, that you're a good Christian. Come on, reconsider with me this morning. Are we in love with the presence of God? Are we in love with the Word of God? Are we, are we? He says, then you will take the right and he'll lead you deeper into the path of godliness. That's holiness, by the way. And verse 70 says, then you will be God's servant. <laughs> I thought he was going to say, then you are going to be something great something spectacular but he says then what will you be a servant of God sitting at the feet of Jesus hearing his word pursuing his presence makes us true servants of God what does that mean we do the will of God how many of you say Lord your will be done not mine not mine not mine your will pursue his presence love his word then you will be God's servant fully mature perfectly 
prepared. What did he say? Fully mature, perfectly prepared to fulfill any assignment God gives you. I want you to know this morning that there are assignments on your lives. You don't just live to make a living. There's an assignment. There's a blueprint. There's a plan of God for every person seated here. There's a purpose to be fulfilled. Let's pursue the presence. Let's pursue the word. Let's be positioned in his presence so that we may know God's assignment for our lives and live purposeful and live victorious and live successful and live prosperous. Hallelujah. If you believe it, shout amen. Give him a big praise. Please, right there where you are, stand to your feet with me so we can conclude our time. Father, thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. I worship you. I praise you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your presence. They are one. We honor you. Lord, I pray, bless your people. Lord, sorry for where we've neglected the word, the discipline to seek you. The discipline, if you've neglected the discipline to pursue the word and the presence and the presence in the word, speak to him for a moment. If you got so entangled in something, speak to God for a moment. If you are bound up and bind up by something and need direction and need hope and need breakthrough and need the Lord to show you exactly what to do, speak to him for a moment. I believe in this atmosphere, God's going to touch hearts, change lives, transform you into what he's called you to be. Donkey here, thank you, Lord, that you do it right now, that you do it in the hearts and lives of your people right now, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Help us to be pursuers of the Word and of the presence, for then we will make our ways prosperous and successful. Then we will live purposeful, victorious, successful. We give you praise. I pray it over every person here, every marriage, every couple, every relationship, every child, every young and old, I thank you that you touch your people right now. God hears your prayer. He sees your heart. He sees your mind right now. The change that you've been looking for is in this moment that you receive it right now in your spirit. Open your heart and receive and receive and receive. There's an anointing here this morning on this word and on your life for God, for you to make certain changes, for God, for you to come back to the feet of Jesus, for, to, for God uh, uh, bringing you to the place where you can make those changes in your life and seek Him and give you the breakthrough you need. It's happening right now. In Jesus' name. Quickly, if you're here this morning, and uh, you know, there's many ways to say this, but can I just be direct? You're here this morning, you say, I am not sure if my name is written in heaven's book of life. I have doubt that I'm saved. That's all I'm asking. Let's not get theological. Let's not think about this. Just a straightforward question receives a straightforward answer. Are you sure your name is written in heaven's book of life? I don't care what denomination you come from, what religious system you've been through. Those things cannot save you, my friend. It's only the grace of Jesus that can save you. I'm asking you, was there ever a time that you say, Lord Jesus, I realize because of my sinful nature that I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. And you doubt this morning if there's been a moment like that, if your name is written in heaven's book of life. And I just quickly want to pray with you right there where you are. Just indicate right now. Take a step of faith and put up your hand and say, that's me. Pray with me. And rift it high. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there more hands? Thank you. Say, well, I feel a bit shy about this. Thank you. Why, why must I do this? Is this not personal? No, this is faith. This is you coming to Jesus. This is you not neglecting one opportunity. Right there where you are, pray this prayer with me right now. And I'm asking the whole church to pray this with me. Say, Father God, thank you today for your grace this morning I come and I give my heart to you Jesus I give my life to you I surrender to you I'm sorry for my past I'm sorry for everything that I did but I thank you that by your blood your finished work on the cross that I am now saved you are the only way, the truth, and the life. Salvation is not by works, but by grace. I thank you for that right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Give them a big hand this morning. Thank you so much. Have you been blessed? Shout amen if you have been.
Listen to those who gave your hearts and lives to Jesus. If you're a visitor or we don't have your information, please go to our info desk, guys. Make sure that we receive these people. Give us your details. We're going to journey with you, get in contact with you, tell you more about our people. We thank you for your obedience.